all the rich history of Megiddo, 5,000 years and more, with Egyptian pharaohs and Assyrian monarchs and King Solomon and other kings, the single most important moment in the history of Megiddo from the perspective of Judeo-Christian civilization was 609 BC when King Josiah of Judah was killed here by Necho, king of Egypt. Why is that and who was Josiah? According to the Bible, King Josiah was the most pious and most righteous king of all Judite kings. He followed the Lord, as it's written in the Bible, with exactly the same way as it is written in the Shema Israel in the book of Deuteronomy. And also, and even most importantly, he is the initiator of a reform, or a revolution even, that made Jerusalem the only place of worship for the God of Israel. And this was of kind of centralization of power, religious and political power in Jerusalem. Also, under his rule, the first edition of the book of Deuteronomy was written, the following books that together were called the Deuteronomistic History and also other stories like the Exodus, the way out of Egypt. So we can say in his library there was a beginning of the Hebrew Bible. These are the remains, uh, the foundations of an Assyrian palace. When the Assyrians pulled out in the 30s, let's say, or 20s of the 7th century BC, Egypt of the 26th dynasty inherited the place. And the Egyptians for a while ruled from this palace. So this palace is probably one way or the other related to the story of Josiah at Megiddo. We have Assyria, the great empire, and Judah is sitting quietly under Assyrian rule. And then the Assyrians, for reasons which are beyond the region over here, pull out. And uh, Josiah of Judah all of a sudden has this idea that this is the moment to fulfill all the ideology, including territorial ideology, probably, of Judah. And without, this was a miscalculation, because Egypt came in, another empire, instead of Assyria. And he did something wrong, possibly some sort of an attempt to expand to regions which were sensitive to the Egyptian interests, and thereby he was ordered here and executed. So it's possible that he tried to uh, annex, for instance, the territory of Benjamin, because we know that later it was part of Judah, because when uh, Jerusalem was destroyed, the government went to Mitzpah. So uh, I think this is a quite a possibility that the pharaoh was unhappy with this little Judean king who tried to play the game of the big ones. The question now is, is there any evidence for this momentous event of the killing of Josiah. So we were trying to look for evidence uh, in the palace, around the palace. We even excavated under in order to see maybe there is a later phase involved mm -hmm. with the late 7th century BC. In this area, there was nothing. However, not so far from here, we opened another part of the tail. Mm -hmm. And there for the first moment, there is a clue which can be perhaps connected to the event of the killing of Josiah here at Megiddo by Pharaoh Necho. We found a group of uh, pottery shirts mm -hmm. which are extremely interesting. For the first time they are giving us a link perhaps to the event of Josiah here at Megiddo, at least to the time of Necho II mm -hmm. at Megiddo because these shirts come from East Greek pottery, East Greek vessels imported mm -hmm. to this country. And we know that these vessels are usually in the Levant associated in the second half of the seventh century with mercenaries, Greek mercenaries, which who served uh, the pharaohs, the Egyptian, uh, army, the Egyptian yeah. army of the 26th dynasty, the pharaoh before Necho II and Necho himself, second half of the seventh century towards the end of the 7th century.
So how do we know about Greek mercenaries which were sent to serve in Egypt of the 26th dynasty? There are two sources. First one is Herodotus, the famous historian of the 5th century, who tells us that uh, mercenaries from Caria and from Ionia in uh, Asia Minor were sent to Egypt to serve in the army of Egypt, of the pharaohs. And the second is even stronger. This is a real-time evidence from the 7th century BC, from King Ashurbanipal of Assyria, who says that there was a king in Asia Minor, the king of Lydia. His name is Giges, and he sent mercenaries from Lydia in Asia Minor to serve in the Egyptian army. And this Giges can be related to a certain Gog, Gog of Magog, in the book of Ezekiel which is a story of a last important fight, an apocalyptic story, and uh, which may be in the beginning of uh, this apocalyptic thinking that led later to Armageddon. Armageddon is in the Christian Bible. It's a, probably a Greek corruption of Ha Megiddo, the mountain of Megiddo. And it tells in the book of Revelation the story of a last final fight between the forces of evil and the forces of good. And of course the forces of good will, will, will win and then the Messiah will return. So here we answer the question that we posed in the beginning. 609 is the most important moment in the history of Megiddo from the perspective of Judeo-Christian civilization. Because 609 symbolizes two main pillars of Judaism and Christianity. First of all, eschatology. The belief that there will be a battle at the end of times of the winning of God against the forces of evil. And secondly, messianism as a result of the victory of God and forces of good against evil at the place where the last righteous David died, died a new David will emerge to redeem civilization.